Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. In this video, we're going to talk about two light setup. So we're going to talk about when to use two light setup, when not to use two light setup, what gear do I recommend when you're using a two light setup, and then at the end, I'll do a demonstration showing how I use two light setup shooting portraits on an outdoor location. Okay, let's jump in. So first, uh, when to use the two light setup and when not to use two light setup. In order to answer this question, we need to have a solid understanding of how to blend your artificial light with ambient light. So we all know the light basically uh, has three functions. is uh, the key light, the field light, and the kicker light. So between the ambient light and our light, and these three functions need to be assigned to either the uh, the ambient light or uh, the artificial light. So we need to have a very good understanding of what each light is functioning as. I mean, between the ambient light and the, uh, the artificial light. So sometimes, uh, because the ambient light is always there, so uh, sometimes the ambient light functions as a one light, sometimes the ambient light functions as a, a two lights. Uh, for example, when you're shooting uh, outdoor, uh, you're shooting backlighting, so the sun is behind your subject, your camera is facing the sun, so the sun is working as the, the kicker light. Uh, because the sky is very bright, and uh, then that bright sky, uh, or any light may be either bouncing from the wall or from the ground that will work as uh, the fuel light. So the ambient light is working as both the kicker light and the fuel light. So what missing is the uh, the key light. And then that's when we're gonna use the, our artificial light, uh, the strobe or whatever, whichever the light you're gonna use. So under that situation, only one, uh, the artificial light only need to function, uh, only need to fulfill one function, which is a key light. So how many lights do we need under this type of situation? The answer is just one. You really don't need extra light to do that. If you add another light, sort of kind of cover the fuel light, you just do uh, what the ambulance, uh, ambulance light is supposed to do. Actually, the result you're going to get is not going to look natural. And actually, that's the typical flashy look. But, uh, so this is kind of kind of ideal situation. So when ambient light can give you uh, like, you know, more than one functions. But uh, when we're shooting outdoors, it's not always ideal. Sometimes we have to deal with uh, a challenging situation. Like for example, your ambient light only function as a uh, one light, one type of lighting function, uh, either the kicker light or the fuel light or the key light. Or your ambient light is a uh, function as a two different lights, but uh, one of the functions kind of need a little bit extra help. Uh, give you an example, you're still shooting backlighting, but this time the sun is setting, so uh, the sun is still working as a kicker light, is, uh, is pretty good for that. But because the sky is getting darker, you're getting uh, less amount of the fuel light. Uh, so get to a point there's not enough fuel light. So now your artificial light need to work as a key light as usual. At the meantime, need to help the ambient a little bit on the fuel light part. And that's when you need two light setup. So um, when we talk when we talk about here, then there are two things I gotta cover. So the first, like, I, I know, because I know somebody gonna ask questions regarding this. The first is that people say, Kai, you mentioned before that you can use your shutter speed to control the ambient light to bring more fuel light back to the um, to to add more fuel light and to cover the uh, the shadow part. Like, uh, why can you just slow down your shutter speed so add more let more ambient light in so to so that way you can deal with uh, the lack of fuel light. Uh, problem and of course you can do that but the problem you got to think about you you not you cannot just keep thinking uh, the lighting on your subject you need to thinking the lighting on everything the whole image you need to think about the lighting on the whole image so what I'm talking about is for example when you uh, slow down your shutter speed and the fuel light on your subject definitely look better because uh, there's a more fuel light on the shadow side but the thing is in doing so you also um, raise the exposure of the whole picture so your uh, background might become too bright an example would be with still shooting like a sunset or something and there's better water or uh, you, and the, the water is bouncing a lot of uh, light uh, into the camera and then they're kind of like a behind your subject in the background or it could be anything reflective it could be like a, a building a glass window anything like that so under this type of situation, you really feel uh, like you're fighting with yourself because uh, you really want to bring down the, um, the background to make sure the background is not uh, too overexposed. But when you do that, you see that uh, the shadow on your subject's face is getting too dark. In order to make the, the shadow back to the level you want, you slow down the shutter speed and then you boost uh, the ambient of the background back again, then the background looks like 
uh, overexposed. So you kind of like, uh, you're really fighting with yourself under that situation. When that happens, you, we really need to have two lights. You just add another light, uh, help to the, the fuel light a little bit, and then you can still maintain the background lighting uh, exposure under control and then get the proper exposure for your background and then still maintain the proper lighting on your subject. So that's the one thing. The second thing is, uh, some people would say, why can't you just use a one large light which is serve both as a key light and a fuel light? Like for example, we do that all the time when you're shooting indoor, we use the window and the window is such a large uh, soft light source and work at both the key light and fuel light. And then why can't you just do that? Of course you can totally do that. The problem is like how practical it will be unless you always shooting, uh, you have a team with you and then that's not a problem. But if you like me, basically always shooting solo, uh, dealing with a large modifier is really gonna give you, bring you a lot of trouble. And um, I mentioned this before, like in order to improve, you really need to uh, shoot more often. If you shoot more often, you really need to make your life easier. And then to make your life easier, you definitely don't wanna deal with a large modifier on the outdoor location. Just do yourself a favor, use two lights. So when, uh, since we talked this part, then that kind of naturally lead us to the next topic. It's like, a, what do I recommend for the, uh, what gear do I recommend for two lighting setup? What I recommend is like, because the whole point of using two lights that we don't want to deal with large modifiers to keep our setup small. So I recommend using small light modifier. The size will be, I recommend no more than 24 inches, uh, like a, normally like a beauty ditch or very small square saw box. Uh, if you watch my previous video talking about the lighting setup, there are two, um, uh, you will see the, the light modifier I use for two lighting setup. And some people will say, okay, so I, I don't have you no know, 24 inches saw box. What if I have a three feet octa? Can I just use that? You can definitely use that and then you won't see a big difference. Uh, well, the lighting gonna be a little bit softer. Uh, but the thing is that you kind of back to that area that like, you kind of uh, deal with a larger light modifier. I just, uh, you know, uh, suggest you to avoid using anything too big and because that way you can be uh, very flexible and then you can be, uh, your setup can be very portable. So when, every time you do a photo shoot, you can cover a lot more area. It just like a, it, every photo shoot can be more fun and less frustration. Okay, so we talk about uh, when to use uh, the two light setup, when not to use the two light setup. But we also talk about the, the gear that I recommend to use with the two light setup. And then we're gonna get to the final part, which is I'll do a demonstration to show you how to use the uh, two light setup on the outdoor location. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just show you a behind scene video. And um, there's something I wanna mention about this behind scene video. First is I choose shooting during the night. The reason I choose shooting during the night is because when it's dark, there's really not much ambient for you to bring in to feel the shadow. So it's kind of ideal situation to demonstrate two light setup because you really need a light to help with the, the fuel light. Uh, that's one thing. The second thing is talking about the light. So the light I use, uh, I use the, the Jiren C100, the small like a light bar. And I decided I'm not using any light modifier. Uh, I don't think there's any light modifier can attach to this other than umbrella. So I decided just use as is, just like a bare bulb, just like that. Uh, but this light has two very interesting features, which I believe is very uh, helpful for outdoor shooting. The first is the light come with a bond door. The bond door is probably the most overlooked light modifier by photographers. The reason I say that is because bond, bond door is a very, very uh, powerful uh, for light control and especially uh, uh, talking about the lighting spill. Uh, basically, uh, if you don't know what light spill is, it's basically um, the light will hit the area that you don't want it to be. Like for example, if you uh, you put a light, uh, you want to use the light to light up your subject. Uh, you want the light just hit your subject and nothing else. Like you don't want the light hit the wall beside him or her or on the ground, you know, things like that. When you're using softbox, people usually, they do is they use the, uh, the grid to do the light control, but Bandor can do uh, like uh, the same and then in a much easier way and then uh, by closing and opening the band door, you can easily control how wide and narrow the light beam will be so you can really pinpoint your light to where it's supposed to be. So great feature for that and the light cut, this light coming with the band door. The second thing is the color. So when we're uh, shooting outdoor, especially during the night photo shoot, the ambient light is no longer coming from the sun anymore. It's usually it's from the, the street light, the light from inside of the building, you know, things like that, or the neon light. So the color could be all over the place. It could be tungsten, could be daylight balanced LED street light, or it could be the neon light, could be like a yellow, blue, red, could be any color. And sometimes you do need to, you do want to match your light to as the same color as ambient light. 
So uh, this light is, is RGB is basically, and uh, you can use a C, uh, CCT mode, HSI mode, RGB mode. Anyway, what I mean is like you can get any color you want with this light. But to match the color manually and then do the test shot, take a look at the camera, see if everything looks good, can be time consuming. But this light comes with a very interesting function. Actually, it's not the light, it's the app. Because you can control the light with the app. So basically, when you control your light with the app, you can do is you use the camera on your phone to point it at the light source. And then you click on the button called the match color. So basically, you tell uh, your light saying, okay, I want that color. And then boom, it just got to match the color exactly the same as the, where you're pointing at. I mean, if you're pointing at the street light or the neon light, it will match exactly the same color. Okay, so I've done enough talking, and then now what we gotta do is we gotta take a look at the behind the scene video.